what we have here is an eye candy shaft. One of my rarest shafts because the eye candy is a piece of reclaimed Sitka spruce that I like to use in the fifth piece, the fifth position here, because it's got a perfect tight knot coming out of the side of the wood. So of course when you cut a strip, the side now becomes the top. So here I am with a beautiful tight knot on that fifth strip, showing the paddler the way. So this is eye candy and it's all about that knot. The rest of the shaft stack is cedar. And what we're gonna do here for the next few minutes is use both spokeshave and block plane to get some of the square out and some of the round curviness, soft edges in uh, so that this paddle becomes a little more usable because who wants to hold a square paddle, right? So we're gonna work on the top edges here in a variety of positions. I like to start out with it on its side. What I've got here is a, a pretty plain workbench with a wood vise with wood jaws. And obviously I don't have the handle on the blade on the shaft yet, so I have tightened the wood jaws on this end. And what I've got here, it's a simple little stand. I actually use it to brace the blade when I'm varnishing but it also serves to hold up uh, the far end. Uh, and then I've got just a, a rolling cabinet that is here right below the camera. So I've got both ends pretty securely supported. Let's get to it and we're gonna start with a spoke shave. And before I forget, think stroke count because the shaft, you'd think you can tell when one side or the other is overdone and sometimes you can, but sometimes you can't. So I try and keep the habit of counting strokes. So every 10 or 15 strokes or 50, whatever, uh, I flip it over and I try and do the same amount of strokes on the other side in relatively the same position. Here we go, spoke shave. And there's a variety of positions with this tool. Conceptually, I think it's fairly simple. I mean, you can hold it however you want and you can press down however you want. Some people like to pull it and some people like to push it and some people like to be on their left side some people like to be over here on their right side the point is if you're not feeling good with the tool try it in a different position and it may take a variety of different positions and furthermore every hardness of wood reacts differently to being spoke shaved so softwood, softwood, you know, maybe it'll do this, particularly when you're just working on a very thin, like this is a, a small shaving because I'm just rounding off the corner. So the blade is touching very small surface area as, as, your, as your plane gets bigger you'll see that your shavings get bigger because more of the blade is contacting more of the wood. So if you have the spoke shave up on edge like this, you're not gonna be removing very much, but as you keep doing it and that planed surface gets bigger, you will start seeing more of an impact from your tool. And you know, the wood is not consistent. The wood has got a grain and it's got softness and hardness. You know, the growth rings are hard and soft in a lot of wood. Um, so the, the first thing I always do is see if it feels any different going the opposite direction. And also keep in mind that if you are a big epoxier, you will encounter epoxy and that will feel different under your spoke shave. We'll use the block plane here on the, on the bottom piece of the shaft shortly. Well, that's the first little bit on the top side left. Now I want to flip it over and work the top side right. 
because I want to keep it even. So let's let's work this side a little bit too. Softwood, I mean, it. this will go fairly fast. And that's why, you know, keeping, keeping track of symmetry and doing equal work on both sides is important because it's easy to get lost in a rhythm and pretty soon you're removing the wood just to remove the wood, which is something you don't want to do. You want to remove the wood until you get a specific shape. So it's easy to, to, uh, to go all crazy on it especially once you start getting the hang of it. And um, it can go pretty fast. It's one of my favorite parts of paddle making because you know your hands are engaged and a, a certain part of your brain is engaged, but another part of your brain is not and it goes off who knows where and it's kind of cool. And then it's almost like you wake up every few seconds and, and you're back and you don't remember what you've been doing. It's kind of cool. So this is mostly spruce that we're removing. We haven't really gotten past this, this first part yet. And remember, sometimes things change, especially like on the first side, I thought it felt better in the direction that I was mostly going. Here on the other side, now it's feeling better if I am doing the opposite. It is entirely okay to vary the routine. Probably did a little more on this side than I did on the first side, but let's uh, flip it back over and switch tools and we'll go to a block plane. <laughs> 